This is KRCR News Channel 7 at 11. Getting the facts right. Brand new details in the, into the murder investigation of Marissa Nichols. Police just released this surveillance video of what they believe is a person of interest in the case. Good evening on this busy Friday. I'm Mark Mester. And I'm Tracy Leong. For the second night in a row, Red Bluff Police Chief Paul Nanfito held a press conference to discuss new developments in 14-year-old Marissa Nichols' homicide investigation. Breaking news tonight, police are asking for your help in locating a man they say is a person of interest. I really don't want this to turn into a story about where the victim was. I want this to turn into a story about that man. And I want the assistance of the public in finding that man. This is the man Red Bluff Police Chief Paul Nanfito is referring to. Surveillance video from Red Bluff High School captured his image Tuesday morning at 11.01 a.m. In the video, Chief Nanfito explains that the man is walking east on Douglas Street and then turns south into the campus parking lot. She was, about, she was on that street and about a, about a minute and a half later she would appear at the same corner there. Law enforcement needs the public's assistance in locating him. He is described as a white male, possibly in his 30s, about 5'10", with a stocky build. Natural red goatee, short to medium length, red shorts, possibly cut off sweatpants, and a colorful tattoo on his lower left ankle. So we have an interest in, in speaking to him to learn what he knows, what he may have seen, what people he may have seen. He may be a potentially good witness. Or he may be something else. If you know any information regarding this man, please call the Red Bluff Police. They have two tip lines set up. You can call 530-737-3160 or 530-737-3225. Again, Red Bluff Police need your help in this investigation. If you know anything about the person you saw on your screen, please call them. And for the numbers, we do have them listed right on our website, krcrtv.com. And tonight's press conference happened after hundreds gathered at the Red Bluff High School football field for a prayer vigil. I caught up with students and a teacher coach tonight to find out how the school is working to make sure that students feel safer. You know, they don't teach you this kind of thing when you're, when you're getting your credential on. Corey Hine has many responsibilities on the Red Bluff High School campus. He teaches social studies, and he's the head football and track and field coach. Uh, you know, from a, a coaching standpoint and the extracurricular activities, you know, we've asked them to kind of, you know, use the buddy system, you know, when they're going different places on campus and on the outskirts of campus. It's a message that's getting through to students. Well, I've been using the buddy system. Like, I don't Dejanay Williams says teachers address students on Friday morning. They told them to be on alert, never travel alone, and communicate with adults. So for me, I use my friends. Like, I feel safe with my friends, just a comfort zone. I have my cell phone on 24-7, and I used to just go to the bathroom by myself, but now I don't want to even go to the bathroom, scared that something could happen. Are you worried for your safety now, being on campus? Um, a little bit, but, you know, there's a lot of teachers around, and there's a lot of staff that's are looking, that is looking out for us. And here's some blockers so they don't burn you. While school officials wanted Friday to be about safety, they also wanted to pay their respects to Marissa. Samantha Waddell handed out candles to mourners. That's tough. It's really tough, uh, especially how small of a town it is and something so scary happened to a little girl. Others sat in silence, remembering a 14-year-old who was taken far too soon. It shouldn't have happened. She didn't deserve it. She only had 14 years of her life, and it's crazy. <laughs> An autopsy is scheduled for tomorrow, and as soon as we learn any new details, we will pass them right along. And be sure to check our Facebook page and our website, krcrtv.com. And just a quick update, just to give you a quick timeline as to how we arrived where we are today. Marissa's body was found in a field behind Red Bluff High yesterday morning, not very far from the football field that you just saw. Marissa was reported missing Tuesday when she didn't show up from her home from her independent study program that's also on the high school campus. Her family said that she was supposed to meet with friends for lunch around 11, but that never happened. Members of the SWAT team found her body at about 11 o'clock yesterday morning, and the reason the SWAT team was there is because they coincidentally were training that day, so Red Bluff police specifically asked for their assistance in the investigation. Red Bluff Superintendent Lisa Escobar says schools have already made plans with Red Bluff police to boost student safety. My students here at the district is my first priority, so 
you, you really don't want to believe it. And then when you do, you want to do everything. You go into action plan. There's also help for students having trouble coping with the loss. The school has had grief counselors on campus since yesterday. We are also told that the school will provide instructors to start teaching their students martial arts as a way to keep their students safe. And over the past couple of months, Tehama County has seen an increase in violent crime. You may remember last week when we took concerns about the increase to law enforcement officials. We're kind of in a tough spot right now with the, the state budget being what it is and the economy being what it is. We have all suffered um, some degree of cutbacks. Three years ago, I lost 25% of my department, which meant five police officers and five non-sworn staff. District Attorney Cohen and Chief Nanfito said all agencies are working together, sharing information, doing all that they can to stay on top of the growing crime rate. They also pointed out that the rise in crime reaches out beyond Red Bluff. Law enforcement in Corning is also working to slow down this type of activity.